Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for March through June. Over the last one to two weeks, we've seen precipitation mainly over the northern half of the Great Basin with generally above normal precipitation over the last two weeks in southern Idaho, far northern Utah and northeast Nevada, and also even parts of central Idaho that have really been dry up until recent. However, over the last two weeks, we have seen very dry conditions over southern areas of the Great Basin, especially in parts of Arizona into southern and eastern Utah. Over the last 30 days, we've generally seen warmer temperatures across much of the west, along with above normal or even well above normal precipitation across much of the Great Basin. Still some drier spots have been over parts of central Idaho and over the Arizona Strip and parts of southeast Utah. Looking at the precipitation since the beginning of the water year back to October 1st, even with this uptick in precipitation recently, we are still generally below normal across much of the Great Basin. The exceptions obviously are parts of northern Nevada, southern Idaho, and northern Utah, which are near or just above normal. Currently our snowpack is doing fairly well across much of the Great Basin. Again, some of the drier spots are central Idaho, also western Nevada into the Sierra, which are still sitting about 60 to 70 percent of normal. However, we are starting the month with a very strong low pressure system and cold frontal system moving through the Great Basin, so we will see significant increases to the snowpack, especially in the Sierra, but still up towards central Idaho, we likely won't see as much precipitation as far north, but we will see some new additions to the snowpack. So looking at each area individually over western Nevada, these graphs will show the current water year precipitation, the current snowpack, and how it relates to normal or the median. So looking at precipitation, so the liquid precipitation is in the red and the orange. So this indicates the orange bar is showing where the median or normal conditions would be, and the red line is showing where we are for 2024. So you can see in western Nevada, we are below normal with precipitation. And similarly, the snowpack, the lighter blue line shows the average snowpack, and the darker blue line shows where we are in 2024, again showing below normal conditions. In northeast Nevada, however, we are seeing just above normal precipitation and snowpack. Far southern Nevada, also above normal precipitation and snowpack, really well above normal snowpack for southern areas. For northern Utah, we are just above normal. And central Idaho, again, generally below normal for precipitation, but just below normal for snowpack. Wyoming, we're generally seeing also that below normal condition. And for southern Utah, we are showing above normal precipitation, but the snowpack is also above normal as well in parts of southern Utah. So now we will look at the state of the fuels. So first we will look at fine fuels. So the graph on the left or the map on the left shows where rainfall during the monsoon season really is what is most responsible for fine fuel growth for the following fire season. So again, uh, looking at the map on the left, the areas in blue and green is where this monsoon rains are really most important. So parts of the southern half of Utah, eastern Utah, the Arizona Strip, and then some pieces of eastern Nevada really rely on that monsoon moisture for fine fuel growth. And you can see the image on the right is where our monsoon precipitation was this past monsoon season. So again, some of those main areas, northern Arizona, eastern Utah, really didn't see well above normal precipitation to really perpetuate fine fuel growth. Parts of southern Utah and the Arizona Strip were, were near normal. Again, nothing over abundance. Most of our well above normal precipitation for the monsoon season was in areas that really monsoon moisture doesn't make that much difference for fine fuel growth for the following year. So now looking at where winter and spring rains matter the most, the image on the left shows the areas in orange and yellows and reds are really where winter and spring rains are more important than monsoon rains for fine fuel growth. So looking at the image on the right so far, the this water year, uh, areas of southern Idaho, northern Utah, and northern Nevada are seeing near to above normal precipitation. And you can see from the map on the left, those areas are in those oranges and yellows. So really, they do rely on precipitation in the winter and spring for fine fuel growth. So as we continue the rest of the spring, we will continue to watch where these heavier areas of precipitation occur because again, this will generally dictate where we have new fine fuel growth heading into the fire season. So areas we'll continue to watch will be southern Idaho, 
northern and western Nevada and northern Utah for these spring rains as we are expecting precipitation to continue in some of these areas. Looking at our soil moisture as of the end of February we are seeing fairly high soil moisture across much of the Great Basin with the exception of the southern half of Utah, Arizona, and eastern Utah. Also parts of western Nevada have been on the drier side too. As we move through the spring we'll be watching the soil moisture because certainly higher soil moisture will be necessary to see more longer duration fine fuel growth. Our drought conditions across the Great Basin, the image on the left is the end of February, showing minimal if any drought across most of the Great Basin. Some of the exceptions are around the periphery. Eastern Utah, far southern Utah into northern Arizona are showing abnormally dry or small pockets of moderate drought. This has been improving and we may see some a continuation of improving conditions in some of those areas. Western Nevada has been abnormally dry just because of the drier conditions recently, but we should see that start to turn around. However, it's central Idaho where we have seen more consistent moderate drought develop, and this area likely won't see significant improvements to the snowpack as we move through the spring. With really much of the precipitation, it's looking like to remain further south, so that, that drought likely will continue to develop and may even intensify as we head towards the fire season. So looking at the drought now over the last 12 months, you can definitely see a significant change across the Great Basin. Last year is the image on the left, and that would be last February of 2023, showing a generally moderate to extreme or moderate to severe drought in many areas of the Great Basin, and then some pockets of that darker red, which would be the extreme drought. Fast forward to this February 2024, and much of that drought has been erased. Just with the wet conditions we saw leading into um, from last winter, we did see those improvements heading through the rest of the spring of 2023 into the fire season since we had a historic amount of precipitation and snowpack last winter. And then heading into the monsoon season, additional precipitation, and then the precipitation we've seen over the last six months. So again, we've seen those drought conditions really be erased across much of the Great Basin. Again, with the exceptions of the peripheries that we already mentioned. So how do, why does this even matter across the Great Basin? Well, drought is very significant and it certainly points us to what we could expect during the fire season. This schematic shows in the lower elevations, this is the drought time series from the year 2000 on the left all the way through 2024 on the right. And you can easily see the periods where drought was more significant and then the periods where drought started to disappear and then return and you see this cyclical pattern that moves through. Uh, we have seen generally the more significant drought periods last three, four, sometimes sometimes five years, but really two to four years is about uh, the cycle for the more significant periods of drought. And then we see shorter periods in between where the drought either disappears or significantly decreases. So where we are right now is we are definitely coming out of our two, three years of more significant drought. And again, really seeing very little drought conditions across the Great Basin. So those black boxes show where we have above normal years of acres burned across Nevada. And this is really true and kind of can be interpolated across many of the lower elevations of northern Utah and even into southern Idaho. So again, those black boxes showing where we have our above normal acres burned in the lower elevations are years that we really don't have much drought. And again, that's the year where we are entering into. The higher elevations seem to, seem to be on the flip side and we see more longer duration problematic fires in the higher elevations. They may or may not equate to a significant number of acres for the entire Great Basin, but they are significant and they do usually, they are usually the fires that are longer duration and have more team fires um, as opposed to some of the lower elevation, faster moving grass fires. So those fires tend to be more problematic in years where we have significant drought or drought developing. And this year we are seeing some drought develop in central Idaho. So we'll be watching especially that area of higher elevation as we head into July and August. Really the rest of the Great Basin with the healthy snowpack and coming off another year of very good snowpack last year, the higher elevations aren't as concerning in most other areas. We will be watching parts of the Sierra front if we don't see significant improvements to that snowpack. So kind of putting everything together, first some of our longer duration um, weather systems and oscillations across the globe. La Nina and El Nino is always a very hot topic and we have been in a state of El Nino uh, over the last few months and we have seen the weather pattern kind of start to mimic what we would normally see in an El Nino year recently. 
looking at a lot of these lines, which are different forecasts of sea surface temperature, you are seeing all of those lines really starting to go down and trend into the neutral category, or even into some of the cooler blues uh, showing maybe some cooler than average sea surface temperatures as we head later in the fire season and going into the fall. So this tells us that we're likely heading into a neutral period for the later spring and fire season and possibly even a return of La Nina. So what this means, a lot of our impacts from El Nino and La Nina occur during the winter and springtime. And currently, uh, we are obviously in that time period. So with a traditional El Nino, we would see wetter conditions in the far south, warmer and potentially drier conditions in the north. Uh, we haven't seen that much of the winter, but we have seen more signs of that pattern really in the last month or six weeks developing across the Great Basin. And we are anticipating this pattern to really continue going through the spring. So looking at our short term forecast, this is the next eight days or seven days. So the first week of March, we do again have a very significant winter storm moving through the first couple of days of March. And then following that storm system, we will continue with some weaker systems heading through the first week or even the first half of the month. So we will see significant precipitation several feet of snow or more for the Sierra especially, but really significant precipitation across all of the Great Basin. The far south might not get quite as much precipitation heading into southern Nevada. However, many areas at least will see some light, if not moderate to heavy precipitation, much of which falling in the form of snow. So really good improvements to the snowpack expected into the first half of March. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us through the first half of March. Again, you can see um, that how that pattern looks like it will be continuing with cooler and wetter conditions for the Great Basin, especially the southern half to two thirds of the region. And then looking at our four month outlook going through June, you can see for March and April temperatures in the top row generally showing near normal or even cooler conditions, especially for the southern half, which is likely where that storm track will be headed. And then looking at the precipitation, the row below, you can see the green areas showing above normal precipitation likely for March and April, really for much of Nevada, Utah, into Arizona, but still showing somewhat drier conditions or near normal in some spots across Idaho into western Wyoming. As we head into May and June, we'll likely see this wetter pattern really start to taper off. So we are looking for some warmer and drier conditions. And you can see down in the southwest, uh, heading towards June, this is really when we would see the monsoon start to develop, or at least conditions start to develop in the southwest before they move up into the Great Basin in July. And generally still showing kind of not really that above normal signature um, and not really any significantly warming of temperatures, really what's needed for the monsoon to really get going. Um, so right now we're still kind of looking at probably a drier scenario for the Great Basin at the present time. So this is a look at those temperatures and precipitation for July and August, so kind of the early hint at the monsoon outlook. The temperatures on the left show a lot of cooling in the west and really we want to see you know, significant warming in the Four Corners area during these months. Precipitation, again, really kind of remaining down in the southwest at this time. So not really seeing a very active season for the monsoon up into much of the Great Basin. Still near the Four Corners area and over eastern Utah towards Colorado and even down into the Arizona Strip, kind of those areas will likely see more of a normal to even possibly above normal precipitation signature with the monsoon. But as you go further north and west, really not seeing any significant surges of moisture at the present time. Again, we will definitely see moisture surge north, but we're not expecting a super wet period for the monsoon season. Again, this can definitely change. Monsoon forecasting is very difficult, but these are some of the early signs. So putting everything together, the outlook only goes through June, so we're still looking at normal fire potential for the Great Basin. Areas we will continue to watch, which could show some signs of above normal fire potential by June, would be the lower elevations, again, anticipating a wetter spring, anticipating more significant fine fuel growth with no drought, more saturated soils. So we are looking for possibly above, above normal fine fuel loading for parts of the northern half of Nevada northern Utah heading into southern Idaho. So those areas in June, we could start to see some above normal fire potential areas develop as we get closer to this time period, kind of watching that spring precipitation. Kind of further out past June is where we'll be looking up into central Idaho. So more likely later in July, August for central Idaho, we could see some above normal there, depending on how the rest of the spring plays out with precipitation and snowpack. 
but again a lot of the other higher elevation areas not as much of a concern at the present time we will watch the sierra front uh, those areas in the foothills and the higher elevations could come into play going into july and august also if we don't see significant improvements to that snowpack so that concludes our seasonal briefing for this month check back next month for the latest updates